Hello, I'm John Ryan. And I'm J.D. Orr, and this is the Boxing Around the Handball Drama kind of podcast, U.S. Handball Talk. Well, we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. First, let me read a short announcement. This episode is not sponsored by HL, HBL-TV.com, your home for German club handball. You can catch every match in both the first and second division of the German Bundesliga for just 39.99 euros for the entire season or just 3.99 euros for a month. This includes a weekly top match with English commentary from uh, Chris O'Reilly or Paul Bray usually, uh, as well as the opportunity to watch Americans like the Hooter brothers at Dormagen and Paul Skrupa at VFL Lupec Chartal uh, apply their trade in the second division. Again, not sponsored by HBL-TV.com, but maybe it should be. All right. We'll get there. We'll get there. Hey, JD, how was your Christmas? It was it was a fine Christmas as it, as it possibly can be with two small children. So Charlotte's getting old enough now that she understands presence so that was i think uh i think the the plus but uh lydia is still too fresh but uh yeah i was hoping for the boxing day you know as today's boxing day for our british uh contingent you mean you didn't watch dormagen pick up a 34 or 32 victory over essence That's- that's a pretty uh that's a pretty good good solid handball match right there but no i i did not so it was right. uh well i know how it's like with with two small <laughs> two small daughters all i can say is jd they they get over they get older the drama comes oh yes and eventually oh, the yes. drama starts to secede and that's that's where we're at now we had we had a family reunion in vegas did a lot of fun mm-hmm. stuff uh checked out the sphere oh yeah what did they highly, have on the display from the outside? We didn't, we didn't see you two, but we saw okay. the, the little film that they have. You went into it or just to watch the outside? And we went into okay. it. They have a film that they show uh, on some nights. and uh, Oh, that was probably very cool. It, is, uh, it, it looks it, awesome. It is an incredible facility. It, it really is. I would go to a U2 concert if U2 wasn't there and they were just playing the music. Yeah, yeah. But, I believe uh, it. I mean, everything I've seen, it looks unreal to, you know, like the, I think it was a safari or some kind of like nature thing that they were showing when I was seeing a highlight on Instagram. Yeah, that, that's what we saw. It was okay. It was all right. I mean, it wasn't. They, let's put it like this. They could have gotten some people really sick if they wanted to when they did like the oh, yeah. kind of like you're flying. They could yeah. have done a stall out and, and people had been like, you know, jumping into the <laughs> into the uh seats in front of them if they did yeah. that but that, that's enough of our uh christmas boxing day talk well uh, let's let's dive straight into some handball talk uh I, i'm gonna start out with a couple of rhetorical questions and you can answer them or we can wait till the end to answer yeah. them yeah uh, is it possible to cheer on u.s national teams and hope for the best Sure. At the same time, be really concerned with the apparent lack of a plan to expand the talent pool as uh, we approach the uh, 2028 Olympic Games. I think it's an everyday activity for for many people. (laughs) I think it's possible. Yeah. Um, Yep. Is it possible to point out and question the lack of planning without being branded as an asshole? with poor social skills again an everyday activity for for a good number of people so yes no it's not possible you will be branded (laughs) but it doesn't matter we're here to talk yep so there's a lot of there's a lot of drama to unfold there on on both sides of the coin um you know i look at uh i think i think you have a a platform and, and a voice that is created a, a reputation that unfortunately has gotten a bit of a, a negative tarnish uh because as you've gone to show you know you've written a lot of pieces that have 
you know, kind of Simpson style fell, fell into place somehow. Uh, not really somehow, but just, you know, a logical conclusion. Um, and I think the big thing here is, uh, I know I've talked with a lot of the older contingent about how we had a strategic plan started in, you know, 2017 was the start of it and kind of signed off approved 2018. And that was 10 years of preparation for LA 2028. And, uh, I know you've done a pretty deep dive into it, um, but we're we you are know, four and a half years out and it's getting more and more concerning uh, each and every day. But at the same time, we have to continue to move forward. So I'll let you roll with that. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's such a big topic. Sometimes I don't. It, it's it's hard to get your your arms all wrapped around it. Um. Well, let's say I, I wrote a few things down. Um, we we talked a lot about the we you know about the U.S. man, and you know how they've they've had some some good results, maybe not you know great results if you're looking for medals, but uh, um, I, I I see that as good fortune, and I just. I I've got some very big doubts as to whether a similar path is possible for the U S women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think if you talk with, with the coaching staff, there's a lot of, you know, when you say players have just kind of fell under the lap, they get upset about that and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we have been very fortunate. I think that we've had a lot of players that have, been around in the in the program for a long time that have also turned out to be pretty successful um as well as finding you know some nice hidden gems here and there um but on the women's side it's you know we're aging out that that generation and we aren't really finding a ton of diamonds in the rough so uh, maybe some nice precious stones or whatever but uh no no diamonds quite yet well you know my my favorite is uh right wing Sean Corning found through a New Zealander watching Liga Asable sending me a message and me contacting the coaching staff. Yeah. So starting starting right wing or you know yep. playing the bulk of the minutes at the Pan Am games. It's just know, like so. how 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 is that as you as a you know in this case a humble fan of of handball just going out and being the head recruiter that seems to be a well, bit of a head scratcher I, you know I, I i feel bad that i didn't find them sooner and had to had to uh rely on uh, alex uh yeah. you know labor you know uh that was just uh you know dumb luck but yep. regardless you know they they've they've fallen into our lap and i think coach hedden has done an outstanding job of taking a, a disparate group and molding them into a team yep. because you know they they all had that american connection but you know a lot of them didn't know each other from adam but i mean you you've seen that team more behind the scenes than I, than i have i mean i've seen a little bit but that's a team and that yep. you know building that type of cohesion that's nothing to say like oh that's no big deal that's that's tough to do yeah and especially when you bring in you know you know, for instance, going to training camps where there might be one, one or two new guys that aren't as part of that core group that, you know, because this team's been now together for going on seven ish years, the same kind of core, core group with the Hooter brothers, Paul, Drew, Gary, um, Abu, you know, Renee is in that kind of grouping, but he's kind of, not really in the same mix as he Alex once Chan was when but... we had, when he has a passport. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, definitely the last three or four years, it's been the same kind of contingent, uh, posse. And, you know, it's a lot of those guys, like I mentioned, were junior team guys. So they've been around for, you know, over a decade now. And, uh, so that's where it's kind of tough to, to crack into that. And they're all relatively the same age, you know, nobody's, too terribly old yet there's definitely some guys that are on the aging side but 
you know, this, hey, Gary Hines, uh, he's, yeah, he's okay, definitely right, on the aging yeah, side. Sorry. <laughs> I forgot the, the ageless wonder. Yeah. So and, and we got a few on the north side of 30 now. Yeah. You know, that's um uh, that can go a number of different ways, you know, in terms of you know how they want to continue and whether anybody comes up and pushes them, you know, gently into retirement. Um but uh yeah, I it's like I said, I, you know, I, I look at the eye handball and, 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 you know, what it would take just to find one guy, you know, that can, can push his way into that and what it would take. And, uh, I think it, I, I, this is what I think it would take. I would think it would take being recognized immediately right now, as we speak today yep. and probably going over to Europe for the start of next season. And, Playing two or three years, you know, improving, also coming to U.S. training camps, and and, and working your, and, and working your way onto that roster. And and right now, I don't really see. I mean, there's a couple guys at West Point, maybe, you know, but they got they got their army career. Yep. Um, yeah. I, I'll it's walk you different. down with the the throw the 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 slope there because you know you have several guys that have gone down that road. Um, I'm going to just name a handful of Nick Zeracos, Mike Lee, and uh, Bolte. And, well, and all. Well, I, you know, Nick, Nick Zeracos, I, I, I think he's, he's got a future. It, I, yeah. But he's now been, let's, let's see. He, I played with him or I coached him in 2017 as his first handball, to, taste of handball whatsoever. And he basically moved to, to Europe soon thereafter. And he's, you know, I'd say finally now, you know, five years, six years later, cracking you're, into... you're back up, backing up my point. It, yeah, it can be what, done, I, yes, but, but it's, it's a multi-year a, path. Yes, yes, absolutely. And Bolte is my next example where he, you know, was identified, immediately got into the, the conversation of putting him in Europe, COVID hits, he you know misses the window, eventually gets over there. And, you know, he's at a position where... We're, we're pretty stacked at pivot. So, you know, there's kind of just like a, Hey, you know, if you want to stay here and, and keep growing again, a multi-year thing that maybe you'll, you'll catch a break, but you know, that's a big ask for somebody that's at the end of the day, not terribly interested. And and Michael Lee's still, for all I know, still in Germany playing at a, I think third or fourth league level. Um, so I have not, had any contact with him in, in quite some time, but he was in the Frankfurt area. I think I'd have to ask Hendrick because uh, they were close. They were at the same university, I think. Well, you know, it's, it's sometimes it pans out for people. Sometimes it doesn't. That's just the natural. Yeah. I mean, Luke could have gone there and like, you know, turned some heads and they're like, you know, trying to figure out, you know, his, his pathway and they're really propping up or, you know, it just does okay. Doesn't you know? Doesn't you know? It's not a uh, an immediate like. Oh, this guy is going right. to zoom to the top. But it, it happens differently for different people. Yep. Um, but uh, when I when I turn and I look at that and I say, okay, on the women's side, I mean, what's what's your perspective for the same same sort of possibility? Yeah, it's it's one of those things that you know, like we talked about a little bit last time. You can get a a higher level athlete here that they can make an impact on our national team very quickly. Um, but for them to go from like a, a here to here point, you know, I think a, a short stint in Europe could, could really catapult them uh, to, you know, not just their own handball skills, but bringing the team up uh, quite a bit, but that's finding that athlete, making their, making sure they're committed to that, that plan. Um, Cause you know, right now it's, and I guess, I guess what we're saying is it's, it's, it's who you have to beat out right. realistically. And it's been a while since I played, but I, I knew who played my position. I knew how good they were. And it was, you know, as I, as I, as I really learned how good they were, I, I learned it wasn't probably going to happen for me. Um, but if it had, if, if it'd been weaker competition, you know, maybe I maybe I would have stuck around. I, I don't know. And I was getting older, um, but uh, there was some there was some real competition, and I knew 
good athletes would probably be coming, uh, especially if an, with an Olympics happening. And, and I guess what I'm saying right now is the competition on the women's side, um, yeah, I, you can make, you know, like what we were talking about last time, you know, a D2 basketball player with, uh, with a respectable career. He's almost immediately finding playing time. Yeah. yeah which is that's just insane. Yeah. It's, it just shows you what the, what the current, current level is. I and that's I made I made a point to my coworker whose uh, cousin plays on the volleyball team at Wisconsin, and you know she's six seven. And I told him I was like, look, you know she's on a very good volleyball team, obviously. And I, I realized it's a a total long shot, but I was like, in the reality of things, if she's interested in the Olympics and she might not be able to make the the Olympic volleyball team at six seven, uh, I I pretty confident that she could go in and definitely make a name for herself uh, in the handball realm very quickly uh, at, at a minimum on defense, potentially just from just being an imposing presence. You might not even have to make contact just at some of the games we play. Um, but it's just, uh, it's just ridiculous. I think right now, cause I feel like our average that's... heights like five, seven, maybe, maybe minus Kathy. <laughs> well yeah um and you go way back in history that's how they got several olympians is they had like uh usa basketball trials mm -hmm. you know and they would show up and say hey maybe you're not going to make this team but if you're interested in making the handball team you know let's let's talk yeah. um and um you know some really good athletes they had to put in their time to learn the sport but they um they did it they became think, Olympians, multi-time Olympians. Uh, I think that brings up a good point for what you wanted to probably talk about. It's just the conscious effort in how we go about recruiting and what are we doing with the recruiting? Yeah, I, I guess, you know, I, I think it's paramount. I, I, I don't think it's one task of many. I think it's the most important task. I've thought that for for several years. Um, when they uh, hired Coach uh, Borsis, I you know they, I was asked about you know what 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 the U.S. should look at a coach, and you know what my answer was. My answer was we don't really need a coach right now. Uh, you know Julio could coach the national team. Uh, Craig Rock could coach the national team. Um, Kappelman could coach the national team. Uh, my my point was it wasn't uh we didn't we didn't need a big name coach to yeah. uh there wasn't gonna be a whole lot they could do. Um low budget, and, low resources, low and, you know. and don't get me wrong, I don't think she's yeah. getting paid a whole lot. I don't think she's getting a, a, a big time I think salary. I think it's probably similar to Robert. It's like two hundred dollars a day for days of competition and uh training camps and stuff like that so you know at the end of the day it's it's more volunteering than it is uh yeah, a job you know, i mean and, and i think she has you know i i know less about the women's team i saw them in chicago before she got them together but i think she's probably done a pretty good job of you know working with them as a group um i think taking second place at that tournament with the team that they had i i i Better than I thought they would would do, especially when uh, they lost Eden Esper. So uh, a solid coaching job, but um, I I don't think we need uh, a big big time coach, you know, to teach the X's and O's at this point. Hopefully we will, but right now I don't think we need that. And the other interesting piece I think here is that you know you look at the men's side and. 95% of the pool is in Europe. And so they can get together pretty quick and easy in Europe to have training camps and sessions and things like that. Whereas the women's side, it's mostly over here. You know, I, I don't want to say mostly, maybe it's more like 60, 40, or maybe like uh, 
it's not a it's not as one sided as what I guess what I'm getting at. Is. Yeah, yes and no. I mean, and, and not on even all you uh, want to work with. Right, you know, because we have some some Mexican you know conglomerates and uh, you know there's more I guess maybe hemisphere we'll divide it divide it that way. So you know, and I guess you know that that actually speaks well for Mexican handball development that we have two or three athletes you know learning the game down there and making our national team that would not have even been been a yeah conversation 30 years 40 years conversation ago. Ah, i mean if mexico would be a team we'd beat by 25 goals and uh would be solidly better at every position um so i mean that speaks to the development that's that's taken place there um and it speaks to the you know the the reality that um, we don't have that sort of development here, and then we don't have the resources for the for the type of residency programs that we've that we've had. Yeah, we don't have as much, I think, infrastructure in general as far as handball being played. I mean, I look at you know the one Mexican guy that we have on our Homos Armada team, and he's from middle of nowhere, Mexico, and they have a pretty strong you know team with a good league, and they promote it and they discuss it, and you can do deep dive all you know it's pretty well i think put together so i think it just we got a lot of a lot of work on on all fronts not just national team but club level as well to to get caught up and, and to be fair we've never had much of anything in terms of grassroots for the men or for the women but for the women it's been virtually non-existent mm -hmm. it's always been um basically the the residence team and the athletes that have come from there. Um, yeah, yes, West Point has a team, and, uh, you know, Ohio State's got a team now, and Carolina, so, I mean, Carolina. it's not yep. non-existent, but um, it, uh, it, it's been less of a contribution from the club scene and more from getting the top athletes, going with a select group and, and training them up. Which here here's a dichotomy for me. Who is the biggest critic of the uh, of the residency program at Auburn? I'd say it's probably probably you. Um, it's, you know. And 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 now I'm in the awkward position of essentially saying we got to do something like Auburn because yep. we've got an Olympics coming. And we have no other possible solution at this time. So it's kind of kind of awkward. Yep. Got to <laughs> pick a side. You know, you, you see the, the problems on both ends and it's like, oh, man, you know, what do we do? Where well, do we it, go? It, it's a question of timing right now. And I don't even know if we could have gotten things um, developed, some sort of grassroots residency hybrid you know back in the in the teens if you will when we were messing around at auburn i don't know if we could have done something like that but um something like that would have been better than what we did there they so we were trying to do a lot in the local community but auburn is just such a i don't want to say desolate location but it's it's out there you know it's a good couple hour drive from atlanta and that's that's all you got for many many miles so from a gathering in resources of people to come there was, was a bit tough yeah and i guess i guess well you know first of all, i'll go back to the the, the the three the three paths that i see that i see it that i say board you can just do nothing mm -hmm. and just Which go with what we got at. and just you know i say the board i mean it's it's also it's also the administrative staff, which, you know, right now is, is Martin Brannick, the CEO, and uh, uh, Matt Collins, you know, mm -hmm. is, is his helper, and, you know, the associated volunteers. Uh, you know, they, they, they could set up a discussion to say, hey, this is where we're at. This is where we're headed. Here's some options. Let's take a look. You know, let's discuss the pros and cons of each. So it's kind of a... Um, it's kind of a combination of those two factors that need to sit down and, and start 
making some they decisions don't have and... to, but they should. They yep. should start down and, and, and take a look because because the do nothing approach um is not nothing, but it's it's basically saying we're gonna go with the athletes that we have, mm-hmm. we're gonna get them the best that we can can be, and um basically copy the men's strategy. Uh, it's not quite as simple as that, but that's that's a top framework for what for what it is. And um that that would be one solution. The the other solution uh, would be a you know what? We're going whole hog on recruiting, uh, getting specialized athletes, figuring out how to identify them, figuring out how to train them and get them competition. Um, and that could look a number of different ways, but it's basically saying we're going, we're going whole hog in that direction. Cause that's obviously what we need to do. I, I say, obviously it's not yeah. necessarily obvious, but if one looks at the talent level, we say, well, we can get better off with athletes to play this game. And then the other is kind of a hybrid approach where we, 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 we continue with the, who we got at the same time, look for, look for more athletes. What's your, what's your thought on those three approaches? Um, I know having been involved with the national team that at option one is definitely somewhere that um, I think a lot of the staff is okay with well, their coaching and, and admin side in the past, just from a, you know, we have, especially on the men's side that you can passively, you know, if somebody stumbles across, that's a good athlete. Okay, cool. We'll, we'll check them out, evaluate them, but we're okay with, with the cards we've been dealt. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like in my opinion, I think we need to get all hands on deck from our, you know, anyone anyone that likes handball and wants to see handball succeed in the U S kind of situation where, you know, I've talked with some people that are fairly involved with the NBA and and basketball recruiting. It's like, to your point, we could go set up shop at a, you know, the NBA draft or um, not even, even at that high level, like a G league tryout or something like that. Um, But on the women's side, you know, it's not that complicated because of how few professional opportunities there are for the next level for those athletes, whether they're in soccer or volleyball or basketball, um, you know, the number, you just, a numbers game alone, you have how many hundreds of schools that produce athletes each and every year. And there's, you know, one, one pro basketball league for women. There's one pro soccer league. There's one, you know, pro volleyball league. And you know, I think I think from a sheer number standpoint, we could probably pick a handful out here and there, but the, we're just not doing anything. And you know, oh, well, that's a nice idea, that's great, but no one's going out and actually making contacts. You know, getting their foot in the door, being a part of the conversation. Well, so I'll, I'll, I'll push back a little bit on that because I think it's actually really complicated. Okay, from you well, know, from a standpoint of sure, you can go talk to some people. But if you don't have a concrete plan in place yep. to sell them before you talk to them, then you're barking up the wrong tree and you're going to have That's some problems. Right. Yes. So yep. you've really got a lot of work to be done. Um, you know, there's a money raising component to yep. that. There's a timing component to that. Maybe you can set up something that's scalable. You know, like here's our here's our bare bones um, solution. You know, here's our gold plated solution, and and here's a bunch of solutions in between that we can scale up, scale down based on the funding and support that we have. But just willy nilly going someplace right. without a, hey, a concrete yep. plan in place is um, or it doesn't get us any bad. further than we are now because they're not going to have anywhere to go. They're going to have anywhere to train. They're not going to have any any real next steps. So, absolutely, yeah, it's there's a, a it's lot a... of work to be done there. Yes. Yep. Um, and I guess it's it's simpler to look at when the next tournament is. Look at the athletes that you have. Try and get them a training camp beforehand. Um, and you know 
get them to the tournament on time, make sure the uniforms arrive um, and, you know, see what we do. Yep. That's, yep. that's very structured. You know, that's a nuts and bolts kind of logistical there's work involved, but it's not, uh, it's, it's banging in the nails and putting the shingles on the roof. It's not designing the house. All right. <laughs> Yep. No, uh, and I've had a lot of fights with people about, you know, you look at gymnastics and some other, you know, obviously individual sports that have these kind of regional training centers that, you know, they're spread out throughout the country where you can go and, you know, try out and work hard and, and try to make a team from there. And if you make that team, then you could go train with the, with a higher up team and so on and so forth. And we, I mean, that's decades of, of infrastructure to be built up that we, just don't have and so that's where i look at something like what mark's doing with i handball and you know sure he's one guy doing one you know kind of off the beat thing that he's paying for out of his own pocket um but it's like it's more of those well, kind well, of activity break, breaker breaker yeah um, i had some people tell me and i kind of scoffed at it but I don't really know what the finances are behind high handball. I can tell you. But I had I'm some people afraid. tell me yeah. that uh, Mark Ortega is getting rich off of his high handball venture. I say getting I, I... rich, <laughs> you know, but, but yeah, that is yeah. a money making, that is a money making yeah. venture. And I'm like, on, I don't think so. But you know what? Yeah. Even if it did become a money making venture, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure the money I would have with that. The money being made is it's marginal compared to the the cost, so the facility alone, uh, you know, is a huge cost. I mean, we had our our Armada League matches there, and I still trying to collect money from people to pay that back, and that was two three years ago. So, all right, well, sorry, um, sorry for the nope. getting you sidetracked there, but no, you you're were talking fine. about like high handball as an example. Yeah, just having you know those kind of spots where athletes can get together and train together, um, you know, regardless of team and club, just kind of higher level handball training, um, which, you know, I see New York has Jerome uh, Fernandez coming in for a uh, come train with him, which is a nice, cool one-off thing to do, but that's very targeted towards, you know, people that know what handball is already, obviously, because if I go tell one of my high state kids, Oh, you can go train with Jerome Fernandez. They'll be like, I, that means nothing to me. So, um, you know, and it, it's just, uh, we need to have opportunities for people to come on, come in off the street and be like, Hey, I want to give handball a shot. I want to take it seriously. I want to see where I stand, uh, with the sport. And, uh, we just, there's not a ton of those chances throughout the country, because if you go into a club, random club practice, say, in you know, I don't know, Chicago or something like that, I, I don't know what it's like there, but I feel like, uh, it's very heavy on the the foreign standpoint and if i say go get a 25 year old financial advisor in the chicago area and he goes into a gym with a bunch of you know euros and you know guys from all over the world i'm not sure that's really the vibe he's looking to spend his wednesday or thursday night or whatever night they practice maybe yeah it's it's uh I, well i think i think you allude to the you know the issue that i was getting at which is, you know, how do you convince uh, a 22 or 23 year old solid D1 player who's not good enough for the WNBA? Or I might add, quite a few pro leagues in Europe. Mm -hmm. I yep. mean, even yep. even even Katie Timmer Timmerman's getting paid South to Korea. play basketball in Korea. Yep. Um, so it's not you have to have something that's sellable and. That's a you know, location thing. That's an other opportunity thing. There'll be a calculation done in people's heads of like, how long do I have to do this before I get to, you know, walk into the stadium at the 2028 Olympics? Um, can I do stuff at the same time? Uh, it's, it's complicated. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, and we, we, you know, we talked to, you know, I, I, I rhetorically mentioned it and other people have, you know, had the same ideas. Like, there is a documentary that could be done. Oh, absolutely. Um, that would be pretty entertaining, I think, 
um, that could fund it. Yep. So I don't know who's working on that and, and who's making the connections to do that, but no organization is probably better equipped to, um, has the cachet, I think, other than the USA team handball and the connections. It doesn't mean other people can't be involved. Right. right. But there's. If, if they start poking that narrative, it'll go a lot further, which is, I think, what we've seen a lot with some of the other organizations that have come up that don't have as much clout, you know, to be able to stir up things up because, you know, Mark Wright with American Handball Associates has been trying to do exactly that, creating a, a documentary about this women's, you know, tr tracking the progression, you know, and he hasn't really gotten anywhere. Um, a lot of conversations with a lot of potential people, but. Yeah, no, the, the no right landings. people getting involved and, and taking it on. It just seems like it would work. And I don't, again, I don't know what the timing is of that, but if um, those are the sort of things that should be priority one, yep. priority one. These, yep. these are the sort of things that should have been worked on in the middle of COVID when, when we couldn't else do going anything on. else. Yes, yes. But ah, uh, just, you know, it is what it is. We're, we're at where we are where we are now. There's still things that could be done. You know, you, you've got the Olympics coming up. How do you smartly tie that in? Um, there is a plan that could be done, and it just needs to. It just needs to be the top priority. Yep. Um, and priority, and just a priority, like an actual effort being put into it on a regular basis, not once a quarter talked about. I, I, I would list out everything that we need to do and i would put it at the very very top mm -hmm. i would put figuring out what the dues are for usa team handball towards the bottom but that's just me i, I, got, I, well, I, got... I agree i'm thinking daily daily point you know what am i doing every day to fix this problem yeah. um you know, there's a TV component to it, maybe a streaming service. Um, there's people that have loved handball. How do we get a hold of them? How do we get them on? Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, well, JD, we've got a minute and 20 seconds. Um, lots of talk. Yes. But we didn't yes. solve anything. No. Is there any other part of this? Maybe maybe there's some other part that, that we need to further explore. Somebody out there can, can send us a line. Yeah, I, I'd be loved to dive further because it's one of those things that we can come up with a lot of different solutions, but we unfortunately can't be the ones, as we mentioned at the beginning, making the decisions and pulling the trigger on following through with these cool and maybe successful ideas. Well, all right, JD. Great conversation. We didn't solve the world's problems. We didn't solve the handball world's problems. We didn't solve USA handball problems but always great chatting with you enjoy the enjoy the rest of your holidays yep uh, thank for you jd or i'm john ryan and thanks for listening